Welcome to Electra Online. In the previous video, we showed you how difficult it would be to solve the volume of a sphere using Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. And we had this particular integral in there on the previous video that we just simply skipped over, said here's the solution. But of course, we should show you how to actually find that integral. And the integral was the square root of a squared minus x squared dx. And so what we need to do here is we need to use a trick substitution. We do that by calling the hypotenuse a, the opposite side x, the angle theta, and then of course the adjacent side will be the square root of a squared minus x squared, which is what we have here. Then we can use the trick substitution that x is equal to a sine theta, the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle, dx d theta would be a cosine theta and then you bring the d, d theta over here and then theta is equal to the inverse sine of the opposite side over the hypotenuse and that's all we need to then solve this integral because what we can do now is we can make that substitution so this becomes equal to the integral of the square root of ax squared minus x squared. x squared would be a squared times sine squared. So it would be a squared times the sine squared of theta. That's all you need to radical. And then dx is defined as a cosine theta d theta. Like this. Then what we have here is we can factor out an a. Uh, a squared that becomes an a times this a that gives us an a squared outside the integral. And then we're left with the square root of 1 minus the sine square of theta times the cosine of theta d theta. And of course, 1 minus the sine square, that's a cosine square. But since it's an a to radical, that gives us the cosine times the cosine gives us a cosine squared. So this is equal to a times the integral of the cosine square d theta. And so now to integrate to cosine square, we have to think of the right trick substitution. And so this would become a times the integral of 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta. And then we still have the d theta right here. And then, of course, the 1 half comes out. We can take that out. So this is equal to... Did I forget an a square? Yeah, that would be an a square. I forgot my square because it's a from here and an a from there gives me a square, so I can't forget that. That's an a squared. And so we end up with a squared divided by 2 times the integral of the quantity 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta d theta. So what I need there is I need a 2d theta here to be able to integrate that. And I need then multiply the times 2 and divide by 2 like this. So that allows me, this is a multiplication, so that allows me to take that integral, but I have this 1 half left over here. So that gives me equal to a squared over 2 times the, uh, well, now when we integrate, we have 1 times d the theta gives me theta, and then plus 1 half times the cosine of 2 theta to d theta, and that would give me the sine of 2 theta, like this. And now we need to go ahead and substitute back, but before we do that, since we have a sine of 2 theta there, I can rewrite this as follows. So this would be equal to a squared over 2 times, here we have theta minus, oh, not minus, plus, uh, well, 1 half times the sine of 2 theta, that would be equal to the sine of theta times the cosine of theta, like this. All right. Of course, I have the plus constant of integration, so we probably want to go ahead and add that, because if we don't have limits, we need a constant of integration. I think now we can substitute back. So this is equal to a squared over 2 times theta is equal to the inverse sine. That's where that inverse sine came from in the integral of x over a plus the sine of theta. Now, the sine of theta would be x over a. So it would be plus x over a times the cosine of theta. Now the cosine of theta would be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So it would be times the uh, square root of a squared minus x squared divided by a. And I think we're now ready to write it in its final format. So let's go up here. And so that would be, if 
for the first term, we get a squared over 2 times the inverse sine of, whoop, I keep forgetting my constant of integration, not that, inverse sine of x over a, plus, now we have an a squared here and an a squared there that cancels out, so we end up with x over 2, plus x over 2 times the square root of a squared minus x squared plus a constant of integration. And that would then be the result of that original integral. So again, you can see it's a lot of work if we were to use Cartesian coordinates to solve the volume of a spherical object. Uh, you may end up with some very difficult integrations, at least it takes you a long time to get it, and it's probably much better to use either uh, spherical or cylindrical coordinates to find the volume of that. But that is how it's done.